The person that will be working with me in this instance is Dr. Samuel Awolumate, who is a coordinator for the Southwest Incubation Center. The two of us are going to do this presentation together. And before we move on, we're going to have a pool. But fortunately, I do not have access to present the pool. But however, we can work together in the chats and see how we can get it done. So I'm going to put the first question to us in the chat. And the question says, can research be commercialized? Yes or no? Please, let's respond to the chat. Can research be... OK, somebody says yes. Yes. Somebody is saying yes, yes, OK. I'm still waiting. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, thank you. I think or when we have concluded the stage and we have our findings. Let's just put there after the findings, before the findings, at what stage? So we can just chat. Is it at the stage of conception or okay, after the findings I'm seeing this would have been lost along the way. And at that process, if you have to work from the findings, it means you are still going to work backward. And working backward means in a way you're still going to start from the beginning. Because your findings and your purpose for which you went to the field may not exactly match with the market that you want to meet. So having said this, let's quickly look at the research. Now we want to look at the process of the research. And what would this research be? The first is, we ask ourselves, why the research? If you are having the mind of commercializing your research work, from the beginning, that should be one of your thought line. So at the beginning, while you are starting the research, you need to ask yourself the question, why this research? Why do I want to go into this research? Why do I want to spend my time, spend money, spend your energy going into this research? Why we go into research? The first, like I said, is the academic research. And we have reasons why we go into academic research, possibly because we are students and it's mandatory for us that before we earn our certificates, in whatever program we are into, or we earn a degree, we must complete an aspect of research, which we could classify as the research project thesis that you need to carry out. And what normally happens is that when we want to do this kind of researches, our focus usually is on the grade we want to earn. Most times we don't even remember the commercialization aspect of it. And what do we do from what we are taught? Yes, some of us, we go back to look at previous research work. Yes, there is nothing wrong in that. You want to look at, at their findings and what their recommendations are to find out where there are gaps you need to fill. But when you are looking at that, in most cases, about 85 to 90% of the academic process, you are concerned of what you will do that will earn you a good grade. Then the second aspect of academic research has to do with the faculty members. Who are the academics? You want to earn promotion. 
and the focus is on promotion. What will I write? Okay, we want to come up with opinion papers. Coming up with opinion papers, you want to research what others have done, and you draw a conclusion from there. Again, some of us, we go into empirical studies. But in going into these empirical studies, we have not in depth asked ourselves what we want to achieve beyond that. So what has been the situation from observation and even from the complaints that have come from the academic circle is often that, well, we have come up with beautiful researches, beautiful findings, but it just rests on the shelf. Sometimes some of us have come up with wonderful research work, good research work, well researched in, good findings, but the findings are just resting on the shelf. Best still, now we are enjoying the benefit of virtual presence. There we now put it online, somebody cite us, and we have our Google citation increasing, we are happy. Well, it depends on what we want to achieve. If that is our goal, you want to be known, people to cite you, and it ends there, fine. But if we look in depth in the world over, look at the economic growth of any nation, look at the economic development of any nation, it hinges on research. Without research, there is no development. And for what everyone enjoys today, it starts with research. Even the process that is giving us this avenue to have this virtually, it starts with research. But what is the difference? The difference is that for those that are focusing on academic, purely on academic, we are not looking at how are you going to deploy your research for usage where you have come up with the beautiful ideas? So the person that picks it up from there and take it to how it can now be more utilized and be useful to the individual, to the society, and for economic development brings in the commercialization. And some of us are known to us we have come up with beautiful academic research work, left it on our shelf, or throw it into the uh, internet where others find it. And do you know what? For those that want to go into commercialization with those researches, they go through this work, pick the things that are more pertinent, and turn it around. On the long run, you may not even know it is your work that has actually serve as a springboard to come up with that particular product or service that everyone starts enjoying. And this is a secret that we have among those people that are developing the software we have today. Yes, we talk about Microsoft team. That is a secret. They go online to look at those research work. Beautiful idea, academic ideas. So again, what is it? Is it that all hope is lost for the academics? No. What do we do if you are in academics as a student or as an academic self and you are working through ways commercializing your idea? That idea of commercialization must start from the beginning. You don't have to wait until when you conclude research. Like I said, once you conclude commercially, and today millions are made through that. So if you are now looking at the commercialization of research, what should be the first thing to do? You must have the mind of solving a problem. Yes, we preach this as well in academic to say, oh, now we need to see the gap. We want to see the statement of the problem. And sometimes, even before you pass the student on, some spend six months or even spent a year, they have not been able to come up with a defined problem, especially at the postgraduate levels. Now, in looking at this problem, 
You must look at it with an eagle eye within your context. It is usually better to start with your context. Looking around, scanning around for a problem, a challenge that needs to be fixed. Now, after that, you now think of how can this challenge be fixed? That is where we start talking about invention. How can we face this challenge? What can we do that will face this challenge? You look back again, has there been any solution on ground? If there is, what has been the success story of that solution that have been provided? And in this instance, two things are bound to happen. Then where the third part has to do with sales promotion. So in commercialization, you either want to solve a problem, you either want to invent, or you want to promote your sales. In the area of sales promotion, this is quite pertinent. And sometimes we are being used as respondents to these persons. Sometimes you go to the airport and right there, even inside the aircraft, you are given um, some papers, questionnaire to fill. Why are they filling those questionnaire? Because they want feedback from their client, from their customers, and they will use the feedback to look back and improve on their services that will promote the so ask your questions. Am I coming up with a new product? Am I coming up with a new service? Remember, a problem has been identified. And having identified that problem, you have scanned around to find out if there is already an existing solution. And where there is no existing solution, now you ask yourself, should I come up with a product? Or there is a solution, but the solution is not totally meeting the needs of the challenges. So maybe you just have to come up and disrupt the market. That is where we lead to the disruption. So in this case, you have a particular product or service that is already meeting the challenge, but possibly there are minuses where their product or service is not totally satisfying the challenges. So here, you can come up with a disruptive idea, disruptive invention that will help to shift the way people have been handling it to a different way. Now, we could cite examples from what we are using today. Before now, when we are studying video conferencing in the past, when we are using Google uh, Hangouts, we started with Google Hangouts, we started with, um, uh, there was another thing we were using then too. We'll go and log in. You can't really communicate, it was not too friendly. But do you know what? Zoom started working. And at the time they were working, they were futuristic. And they would look forward commercializing. But they never knew a time was going to come that we made their business blue. And before COVID, disruptive market. Now, nobody talk about Google Hangouts. Again, we're not talking about Google Meets. Google Hangouts, they did so now have to go to Google Meets. And in Google Meets, which is now Microsoft that is doing that, what do they do? Because they didn't want to be pushed out, they have to do more research to maintain the market. So these are some of the things we need when we are carrying out our research. If you have the mind of commercializing your research, the commercialization will be part of your thought line from the beginning of the research work. Now, let us look at the research with commercialization in focus. Now, this is a research. And this research is having commercialization in focus from the beginning. The first is scanning. You are scanning through. Scanning, you are not having a focus in this part. You are just looking around what is happening. And in looking around, remember, your passion has to come into play. Your passion is in place. And if you look at what I have in here, you could see some cycles. They are not total close up cycles. They are semi closed. Why? Because at this point of your research, 
you are working towards uh, with focus of commercializing your research, you are not going to close up at a particular point. You leave all your concepts, all your thought lines open so that you can be flexible and flip it around. Now, once you've done scanning, from the scanning, you are able to identify the problem. And when you identify the problem, what do you do? You ask yourself, for who, who and for what? Who are you identifying this problem for? And this is where we talk about market segments. Because when you have problems, this problem, you must identify it and pin it down to a particular market segment. It must meet a particular purpose. There are so many challenges out there. There are so many problems out there. You can solve it all. So when you identify a problem or you identify a challenge, you ask yourself, for who? And whom are you going to use this for? So you must be able to pin it out. And in this regard, let me cite an example with African Center of Excellence for Technology Enhanced Learning, ESTEM that is with us in now. Now, that particular center is set up to help come up with solutions, policies that will help drive technology for teaching and learning. And do you know what? They have a focus of a project and they are focused mm -hmm. on research. Mm -hmm. Any research that do not meet their problem mm -hmm. identified line cannot suffice there. And this is to the students. Yes, you are about starting your work, doing your research. Your research must be able to provide solutions to meet with the team of what Esther has. You see that you are bringing up a solution that will be used for teaching and learning, or you are helping to come up to guide virtual learning space through, uh, through cybersecurity, or you want to come up with artificial intelligence that could help all management information system. So you must know for who from the beginning. So you don't leave it open. And you must, at this point too, dissect the market segment. You must be able to know who are those that are already in the market. And for those that are already in the market, what have they done and what is lacking? And this problem, is it worth going into? What is it you are bringing in differently to solve this problem? This has to be clear before you move on. Then this calls for critical thinking. If you look at it, the next stage now, yes, you have the problem. You have been able to look at who is going to attend, uh, who is this problem going to help. And right here, before you can anchor and pin it down, you have to think critically. And thinking critically, it means you have to be open. You have to be flexible. You don't have to be rich. The non human in the area of the non human resources, you are looking at every other thing that you will need outside the knowledge that you require infrastructure, infrastructure, everything that you're going to need that will help meet up. Then, in policy, you bring in policy, you bring in government, you bring in the society, everything you look at it. Would this help me to really meet this, with these critical things? Or is it thinking just this and it will not actually meet up with what is being required? Now you come up with the idea created. When you are able to get through this and you have had your jottings, you will not come up to idea creation. And in idea creation, you're going to first and foremost come up with your research topic. Now, remember, you have been thinking, thinking, you know, sometimes as students, Say, go and bring your research topic. Ah, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to go about it. This will guide you. Oh, yes, as academic, we want to do a research. It's not for promotion this time. You must think through all this. And if you have commercialization in focus, that before you now come up and come up with your topic, because this will help you come up with a topic. And sometimes when you are working towards commercialization, some people see this stage we are now, as need assessment. There is nothing wrong. You call it need assessment, fine, but that research is going to help you to get into the next level. Even when you do not call it need assessment, come up with a research 
that reset will take you to another level. Without that, you may come up with something that will not meet the solution that is required to solve the identified problems. And that is why you see some people, yes, it still do happen. It was more in the past. They come up with solutions, spend money, spend time, and at the end, the solution won't fly because you have not carried out your research. So at this point, your research is focused, your research is purposeful, then you come up with strategy. You've come up with the topic, you are now aligned the strategy. This strategy follows the normal strategy for your research uh, uh, instrument, for carrying out your research, the procedure for carrying out your research. But what is different here is that, remember, your market segment is key in this particular area. And you must design whatever instrument you want to use in such a way that you will be able to capture exactly the thought line of your market segment. Because if you do not capture the thought line, it will affect whatever commercialization you want to derive. Let's use the research outcome. Right here, you have your research findings. And do not wait until the findings are done. Because at that time, you are strategizing. You have come up with your topic. You are strategizing. As you are strategizing, you must be thinking, how am I going to use this? Now, when you come to the idea development, how well will I use this? Remember, at this stage, you have not gone to the field. You are now trying to ensure that the research you want to carry out will be able to fit into the development of the idea you want to do. So how well am I going to use this? Then you come up again to define the focus. Now, in defining the focus, you have to tell, ask yourself, do I want to come up with a new product, a new service? or I want to come up with disruptive market. There is nothing wrong with that. Look at it, then you go back to your research strategy you are mapping out to see whether this will fit into the research strategy you are taking out to go and get the findings. Now, the next is what are the likely challenges you might face? Now you want to come up with this idea. What are those likely challenges? Map out the likely challenges, now come to your research strategy, key into the research. Remember, I keep mentioning the market segment. In this case, what is your level of market segment? Really, you have to look at it. Is it at the local level? Or you want to make it at the international level? Now, who are those you are targeting? Is it institution, the teachers, the students, or you are targeting the parents or everybody, or you are targeting a particular industry, maybe the agricultural industry or the businessmen, it must be clearly stated. That what is your value proposition? You must know what is the, your value proposition. What additional thing do you want to add to already existing one? When you have been able to spread out this, then you come back to that your research topic and strategy. <laughs> now look through it one after the other and see if it has captured well all these things you have enumerated before you prepare your instrument that will take you to the field. Now, when you come back from the field, you now have to start your implementation because in your idea development, you have already put in place all that you want to do and how you want to go about each and every one of them. Now, when you do that and the stage is set, what is next? You have to think also how you're going to patent and license your work in line with prototyping and pitching. Now, you have come up with beautiful idea. You have been able to come up with it, but have you thought of, how am I going to prototype this? Somebody came up with airplane, and today everyone enjoys it. It was prototype. It was flew at a distance to test to see whether it's viable before you go into producing so many airplanes. Now, if you want to go into production, there must be a place for prototyping. And you must find out what are those things that you will need that will help in the patenting or giving appropriate licenses. I will give you my experience here. I did something 
long ago in the early 2000s. I came up with a software. And that software, you install it into the computer. And from there, you are able to key into the classroom. I actually did it in 2002, between 2001 and 2002. But do you know what? I didn't know I need to license it. I didn't know about patenting, and the thing was just there. But the time came when I needed it, and the question was thrown to me, where is the license? I couldn't produce it, and that kills that idea. After I spent so much money, after I spent so much energy. So you don't wait until when it is done. And some of us also, we even complain, no, in the process of doing all this, somebody may have stolen my idea then you need to think of at what stage do you get to to protect your idea and in this stage of development you must be thinking of how to protect your idea to consult the appropriate bodies on your idea protection and how it will go then prototyping again and the pitching now when you prototype it's after prototyping you cannot call people to come and see what you have done because they are going to see the prototype and see how it's going to work. And prototyping these days have changed, has moved. We want to see how you, the actual will be. So with the use of electronic versions now, we are in simulation, we are able to come up with good prototype. Again, we now have to talk about launching and marketing. When your prototype is set and your pitching is done that is when you think of launching and marketing the product in marketing it is white it goes beyond just selling at this point you must be able to recognize those that are your competitors we have what we call the direct competitors and the indirect competitors so at the stage of the research when you are still not seeing the idea you must visualize to know who are your competitors in the marketplace don't wait at the point of launch if you wait at the point of launch you may hit the market and at the point of launch that idea dies because there are other competitors that will just swallow it up so you have to look at who are my direct competitors that are doing exactly the same thing you are doing or who are your indirect competitors? Those people that have something that can complement what you are doing. Not exactly the same. <coughs> for example, Lapia, a substitute for my uh, catfish. So this has to be in place. Then at the point of launch, you have to think, who are those? Where do I start from? How do I start the deployment? Who are those that are readily available for me to get this into? Then the final stage, in your research with commercialization in focus is review look at it again you see all these cycles are open up because you do not close up at any point you keep thinking how it yeah. so yeah. to look at quickly is how to succeed in research commercialization first adequate research knowledge we must have adequate research knowledge if you want to succeed in commercializing your research. If you don't have it all, you can consult. Look for those people that have adequate research knowledge. Companies that are flying today, they employ people, pay them heavily to do this for them. And again, passion for research. You must have passion for research. You may know it and you don't have the passion for it. If you don't have the passion, it won't go. You must be resilient because at each stage, it will not fly the way you think. Even when you are getting into the market, it may not be as easy as you think. You must be ready to be patient and endure and don't give up so that you get through to what you want to get to. You must be ready to collaborate with others. It's not a case of, I want to do it all. You know, in the academics, when we are carrying out our research, depends on the criteria that is used in the various institutions. Some people, they don't want to collaborate because they feel I want to earn all the points. Fine, it's good to earn the points. But if you have commercialization and the focus, you must collaborate because you can't do everything that you need. You must need people out there that will help uh, bring forth what you have in mind. 
So they lead to you building a team. You must build a team, no matter how. Let the institution come up with thematic areas. Because if you are getting institutional support, institution can come up with thematic areas that will lead to research commercialization. The institution will come up and say, this is what we want to do. Throw it out. Let people bring in their proposals and see whether it meets with that. With that, the institution will be happy to add value to the economy, to the nation, and to the growth of the development of the economy. So in this instance, when you do this, you are creating a focus. Then providing research funding uh, for prototype. Then provide well-established laboratories and idea development and creation centers. Because if you are to do a research that leads to commercialization, you need labs. Labs of different categories. Is it labs where you first and foremost develop your idea? Or the lab where you need to create the idea you have developed? Then you need equipment at the various incubation centers or hall with adequate infrastructure to enhance prototype. Then be the first user of the invention. From institutional support, if you have something coming out from your institution, you be the first. The institution should be the first to use it. If it is something that is not directly required in the institution, you can even pay up, organize some set of persons that will test on that team on behalf of the institution that at the end you will be able to claim the right to say yes this is for the institution and it is done by the institution they organize and support pitching where relevant bodies are called how do you do this now you have been able to identify one two three four persons among yourself your students that have come up with great ideas set out a day whereby there will be pitching for this idea Institutional pitching, you are not bringing other institutions. They, if you are the one that will now help to link them up, invite relevant bodies, relevant organizations, relevant industries that you know we need those ideas to come and look. And when they see, they could have a buy in. Some of them can now support because you are presenting the prototype. Prototype is just one. They might not need to have hundreds of it. And when they are in tune with it, you may not have funders people that are willing to donate into it. Now, you have to protect the student and the staff innovative ideas. They provide policy on the sharing formula between the student or staff and the institution. Because the student, the staff that is working, wants to know how much will I be getting from this, my research, when it is commercialized. When it goes to the field, how much will be coming to me? It may be royalty, it has to be discussed, it has to be back up with policy. They provide leakages and inventions. It is the duty of the institution to provide linkages. Look out for linkages. Look out for industry. Look out for that can help support what is being done in the institution. Their marketing and pricing knowledge is required. At this level, you may not have it, but you can gain it through seminars that could be organized still within the institution, and you'll be able to know how to strategize your marketing plan, and how to come up with your pricing. Some people have issues pricing on what will come up and how much will I sell this service? How much will I sell my product? How will I get the marketing plan? When you do this, definitely your research will become a success. Now, one could ask me, is it that all hope is lost for those of us that our researches are still lying right there on the shelf? No. Bring it out, look through your findings, start from the findings, and walk through to commercializing it. Definitely, there will be several areas you need to rework, you need to repan a bit. If you are looking at the intrinsic, the inner motivation that comes within you, and what is that you want to solve a problem? Solution. But for the intrinsic factors, because some of us, we fall into this category. When we want to start, the first thing we ask, how much, how much, how much will I be getting? If you start with how much will I be getting, you may not be so successful in commercializing your research. But if you focus on, will I be able to solve a problem with this research? 
Then, on the long run, you even make money, more money than the person that is entering with motivation. Now, identify relevant agencies, institutions that be, that, and be guided with their policies. Because whatever eventually you are coming up with, there are institutions that are guiding those evictions. Don't work outside the evictions. Now, in this case, the next thing we're going to look at in the next 10 minutes is building university ecosystem for research commercialization. And when we look at that, we are also going to look at the case study of now. We want to ask ourselves, do we have an ecosystem for research commercialization in now? And I'm going to leave this to my colleague, Dr. Samuel Awolumate, to work on this. On About building university ecosystem for research commercialization, uh, very uh, briefly, because of our time, um, my director, Professor Juliet, had actually gone into the details of uh, what I have in my slide to share. And um, I just want you to follow me uh, briefly looking at the, uh, the ecosystem that the university requires for research commercialization. Uh, let me start by saying that, uh, you know, university can be seen as an innovative ecosystem, you know, that contribute towards national capacity building of the uh, economic system via the commercialization of the university research. Most of the inventions uh, actually uh, came out of the university research. That what's, and let me say this quickly, that you see the understanding of these components, you know, and getting a driver to drive this process, synergy, just all of this process critical for the university project to be implemented, meaning that university commercialization project that has been explained to us of this list of the different components that exist that should exist in university is a fact. Is it my faculty. faculty are meant to uh, to do, you know, number one. They are meant to conduct research, they teach students, and they apply the knowledge that they have for societal, to solve societal problems. Remember what we've just been told, that for any commercialization to, 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 to take place, you must be solving a problem. So the, both the students and the faculty who have gone through theoretical and practical knowledge must be able to apply all of this research to solve a problem and it dovetail into commercialization of course we have the research development units of that university you know the gathering of knowledge to create new products and new ways of solving existing problem and creating services you know having cutting edge research for development that unit must exist in the in the university then we also must have you know the industrial pattern part, uh, uh, partners you know, like we've been told just now, you know, university must partner with the industry, you know, to come up with, to solve the problem of the industry. You know, what problem exists in the industry? How do we research to solve that problem in the industry? So we have the industrial partners partnering with the university uh, also. Then we also have government policy, which is very important, guiding principles and regulation that influence the businesses of both the individual and the university itself. So government policy is another component of this ecosystem. We've been told the incubation hub is critical as well, where, the, where we develop this idea, the basic concept, and turn them into a you know, business venture. We also have the funding. We've just been told about the funding here. We have the public, the private, the grant, the multi-agency funding of, you know, agencies that form part of this ecosystem. Then we have the linkages, we've been told, you know, the linkages that link us with other bodies outside of the university, like even the industrial sector that we're talking about, 
we have linkages with, with them. So that body must exist in that university. Then, of course, we have the business units that will now form the ecosystem. This just, you know, uh, 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 the ecosystem that must exist in the university. All right. So let's look at now quickly a case story. What exists in now? And now you will agree with me that the ecosystem in now is ultimately going to be driven and has been driven by the Deputy Vice Chancellor you know, Technology, Innovation and Research. And like we said, in now we have the faculty, the eight faculties, you know, and of course we've been told earlier, I've mentioned earlier for research, for teaching, community development, based on the research of the students and the faculty member. We have Excel as well. You know, I'm sure you know that Excel, you know, uh, is just like we've been told before, focus on development of human development and research in judicial solution, specifically for judicial solution. They are in collaboration with other body, the Globalcom, the MTN, you know, and the uh, dialogue computers. Then we have the students, both undergraduate and postgraduate. You know, of course, our students undergo compulsory entrepreneurship education. They undergo SIWES uh, uh, during the course of their uh, final stage of their work in the university. Then we have the research and development unit, the DRA here, you know, is uh, very uh, strategic to research and development unit. We've been told about intellectual property here, and we've also been told that we have this also, for research and development to happen in, in our university, we have the infrastructure and the infrastructure, the library, the data database, the lab laboratory, we've been told that the equipments are, must also be there, both in our virtual lab, our laboratory, and all sorts. Then we also have funding. We've just been told also fund is very critical. In, in National Open University, we have the University uh, Research Grant, we have TED Fund, we have other university, multi, you know, other agency outside that uh, now also reach out to, either as individuals you are researcher, the body. Then we have the incubation hub. In National Open University, we have seven incubation centers, you know, across this six geopolitical uh, zone. We have there, we have the virtual incubation system, which we already started uh, using even to train uh, other people who are not even national, who are not even, who are not students of National Open University. We are involved in uh, a NISA training with all that we do virtually. Of course, students and staff incubate. Uh, we have incubate both in uh, the university and Estelle, you know, recently uh, have incubation system for their postgraduate students and also staff as well. Then we have the advancements and leakages in National Local University, you know, where we follow up the alumni and we coordinate university collaboration with other institutions and other body and this body also these units in the university uh, seek industrial and sectoral buy-in in our uh, research work then second also we have industrial sectoral and industrial partners they can be private governments of course we told you about Estel being in multiple uh, partnership with uh, other body other industrial uh East partners you know and and they, they have industrial partners anyway so also there's a need to, all of these things must be guided by the policy of the government. Of course, we have the NUC, the National Policy on Invention, all of this policy, uh, do, I mean, stipulates guidelines on, in which research can be done, you know, the policy on patenting, the policy, there are different policies that uh, we in National Open University uh, follow in our research uh, commercialization. Then, of course, we have the business unit. Uh, recently, we have to, we were engaged in a particular international body in co to commercialize one of our researches. And they were asking us to come up with that business unit, you know, that we run this, uh, this commercialization independent of what we have in the university. For a business unit is critical. And I remember that we have now seen uh, before, we used to have that. But there need to be uh, a strong business units that can promote 
all of this uh, research that we have, uh, we want to commercialize. Like my director has said, there is a need for us to come up with a thematic area, you know, mm -hmm. and this business we fix them up, source for fun for the, uh, uh, for it to go into the market. Like I said before, now this all of this ecosystem need to be understood, driven by the this the, the DVC uh, TIR for it to uh, see the light of the day, so that the entire ecosystem can benefit from uh, this. Then let's look really look at sustain university ecosystem for research commercialization. What does it take? Having established the ecosystem, you know, how will we sustain it? Well, there must be a strong management support, especially with vice chancellor and the boss. There must just be a strong management support system. Of course, there must be motivation uh, for that reward researcher as well. That's reward researcher. Then thirdly, University must create strong collaboration with relevant agency, uh, institutions, sectors, and industry for funding and prototyping, you know, of their research idea. You know, that is very important because many of the laboratory and that uh, we 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 need many of those things may not exist in that university. So there's a need for collaboration because if you are going to solve an industry-based uh, problem you will also need to prototype your idea in such an industry. Then also, we will need a viable incubation center for idea uh, prototyping and developments. We need a viable. Now, these days, uh, incubation center is not just chairs and uh, table and computers. There are many software that needs to be put in place in incubation centers to be able to prototype uh, such uh, inventions. Then, of course, Strategic market plan and the, the deployment is critical if there's going to be uh, sustaining uh, such commercialization efforts of the university. And finally, you know, there must be a strong synergy between this component of the ecosystem. Very important. This synergy ensure that, you know, from the beginning to the end, you are sure that every part is playing their parts such that you know, what is coming out in the faculty, the synergy between faculty and the student, in case students have, have innovative idea, they're able to run it together. The research advancements is going to come in. Then the linkages are coming in, sectorial partners are coming in. All of these things coming together, but finding expression in the business units is very critical for uh, sustaining university ecosystem if we are going to commercialize our research. I want to thank you very much for listening. Um, I hand over to my director at this point. Thank you. Uh, we've come to the end of our presentation. And uh, maybe if we have question and answer, we could take that at the question and answer section. Thank you for listening. <laughs>